What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I'm going to be looking through some restocks and new arrivals at DLT Trading. Uh, we did this three weeks ago or so and I just went and looked and since then they have added quite a few things uh, to their inventory. So we're going to be looking over that. Uh, you might be thinking to yourself, Metal Complex, why would we sit here and listen to you comment on this when we can just go do it ourselves? You're right, you you uh, can do that. In fact, I'll make it easy on you. I'm gonna link this page, which is the new arrivals page and the um, restock page right down in the description of the video you're watching right now so that you can just click on it and go look through this stuff yourself if you want to. But uh, if you wanna stick around and hear my commentary on it, um, then uh, please do. We're about to hit 90,000 subscribers and I have a stupid, stupid epic giveaway planned for you guys. So if you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Um, because you're not going to want to miss that. Thanks to my generous patrons for supporting me. There's a link for Patreon down below as well. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. We have the Heretic Manticore X, which I think is their larger, yeah, 9.2 inches. So if you're looking for a larger dual action automatic knife that is US made, actually US made, that's actually US made, Heavy emphasis on that. Um, and, uh, you know, you don't want to break the bank with Microtech. Yeah. Uh, LMAX, same grade of aluminum, 9.2 inches. This is very similar overall in size to the Combat Troodon. Um, not quite as beefy as their Scarab 2. Um, but, yeah, uh, I've handled these. These are great. Very high quality. Very nice and snappy. Um, 322 bucks is pretty competitive considering that's basically what an Ultratech costs now um, from uh, Microtech. Speaking of Microtech, <laughs> they do have some cool stuff. Uh, the Exocets here in Jedi Master. I know that's a lot of money for a little tiny little dog tag OTF, but okay, you know, I know people collect this stuff. Mini Truidon, I'm not really interested in those. The Makora. Oh, the Makora, what? Wait a second, what? They brought the Makora back, yeah. Yes, it's expensive, I know. I think it's overpriced. It's probably more like a $300 knife because I wanna point this out to you. It does say 9.44 inches overall. I think that's an error. I believe the actual specs of this Makora, I don't know if they'll make a bigger one. I think the actual overall length of this Makora is about 8.44 inches. I'm getting that information from Microtech's video on these. So, more the size of a of an Ultratech, right? You get the cool, you know, little ant on there. Um, I like the inlay work on this, and I like how this comes to a sort of peak or crest at the top. I think that looks really good. Uh, I think the blade looks nice, right? Uh, this is a really cool, really interesting, um, just it's kind of like an ultra tech. It's just a slight variation. I just really like how they did the little grip inlays all the way through instead of dividing them out like they do on the scarab. Um, it's nice looking. It's expensive. And if you want this, you're going to be overpaying for it. But then again, it's like, what are we not overpaying for it nowadays? Right? So they're there. Um, I think they had another one, right? I mean, look at this ultra tech two. It's 50 bucks more than the ultra tech two. So, signature series. And I believe the Ultratech 2 is almost exactly the same size. Maybe the Macor is slightly wider. I don't know. It says 8.35. So, it's slightly <laughs> larger handle and a slightly shorter blade. I think it's almost exactly the same. So, uh, let's move on here. They have a bronze um, Hera for $500. Okay. <laughs> they have a bronze Exocet. Uh, etc. Medford Marauder H's in S90V. That's, I think, their most recent. The Marauder H is a 180. It's not the full, if you're wondering, it's the full length, but it's not the same, like, and probably for the better. It's not a quarter inch like the originals. The um, I think the scales and the blade are all 190 thousandths. Yeah, there you go. So still thick. This is very much still like an XM24. It's just not insanely thick, right? 190 thousandths and then S90V PVD, right? Some of these are really expensive. Um, these are legitimately made in the USA, but they also have, 
I think some less expensive, yeah, like if more basic ones are 785. Still really expensive, right? There's a 725. Yeah, that's about, you know, unless you want something super fancy. Man, there's a ton of them. Holy crap. So these these might just, you know, be worth just browsing because there's a lot of different stuff going on here. Holy moly. That's kind of neat. I don't know why that one. They got Tanto, which which is a compound blade and drop point. Whole bunch of them. Oh, the stovepipe is here. Um, <laughs> if you didn't catch my review on that, the stovepipe is a super nice knife. Taichung Taiwan, right? I think people see Spyderco and they automatically think that because it's Spyderco, it shouldn't be more than like 200 bucks. This is a Taichung Taiwan Spyderco. The nicest Spydercos in the world are made in Taichung Taiwan. What about the USA ones? Yeah. Seriously, the Taichung Taiwan Spider Co's have the highest quality. They're they're higher quality than the U.S. Spider Co's. It's also titanium, and I can't remember the blade still. It's probably 20 CB. A lot of work went into it. Still not a $420 knife. Probably more like a $350 to $375 knife. But you know what? It's going to be one of those weird collector knives, right? So if you're a Spider Co, I'm not going to recommend this knife to everybody. I don't think it's for hardly anybody, right? I don't think it's really all that practical. It's kind of neat and weird if you're a Spider Co collector and you can choke down that price tag. Well, they're available. Something I do recommend highly are these tactile turn bolt action pens. These are the slim pens, titanium and damask. This is exactly like mine, except I think there's a nicer clip on that one. Yeah, you get a full sculpted clip. Yeah, that's a it's a nicer clip. Um, it's just a slimmer pen, which is probably a good idea because these are pretty chunky, right? But you get a Timascus cap, 119 bucks. Easily the nicest pen I've ever handled. I'm not going to sit here and tell you guys I've handled a ton of pens, but of the pens I've handled, those tactile, and those are made in the USA, by the way. Those things are awesome. So the Finch Roadrunner looks really cool. Um, I think that is a flipper or dagger where the blade is symmetrically seated in the handle. Let's look at a closed position image. Close position image. Yeah, it does. Totally seated. That's cool. These Finch knives are nice. Uh, 154 CM. The company's based in Kansas, but they are manufactured in China. He's always been open about that. Um, so uh, yeah, but you know, 145 bucks. These are nice. The Finch knives are nice. They they take on the appearance of a classic folding knife, but they have modern elements. And this is a countersunk. I'm sorry. This is a sub frame lock or bolster lock um, with 154 cm and a steel body. So that's pretty cool. A little seven and a half inch or so. Yeah, 7.75 inch. Little, you know, it's not a true dagger, but pretty cool. The cold steel Frontier Bowie. God, that thing is freaking massive. This is one of the newer products. I don't know when it was designed, but not released until the transition with the new whoever owns them now. 1085, 17 and a half inches overall with a 12 and a quarter inch blade. It's a big old freaking aggressive Bowie knife for 119 bucks. But you know what? It's a cold steel and I bet it's pretty much indestructible. It looks pretty nice. It's a pretty cool, that, I, I don't know. That seems like something advanced knife bro would pick up, <laughs> pound into the trunk of a wet a redwood tree. Um, something that's a little less affordable uh, a little more insane is the um, Cold Steel 13U Sanmai Medium Warcraft Tanto. Wow, that's a mouthful. Um, that's a thick boy. Blade stock. There's so it's a hundred. It's two. You know, it's, it's a fifth of an inch, basically. Um, also indestructible, and apparently Sanmai, which is probably v VG10. It's probably VG10 Sanmai. So too much money for a Cold Steel fixed blade. Um, where are those made? Where are these made? Hold on. I'm not saying cold steels aren't nice. I'm just saying like, really? 365 bucks? It doesn't say. I'm certain that it is, well, let's look on the other side. It's Taiwan. Okay. I mean, like I just said, they make nice stuff in Taiwan. Uh, cold steel is a good example of that, but it's there if you want it. Um, Boker Kit, no thanks. Uh, Boker Falcon, so these are OTFs, $71 dual action OTFs. All right, let's, uh, let's take a look. Where'd you go there, guy? 
Okay. Don't care for the recurve blade, and I can already tell you, just looking at this picture, that the uh, the edge bevel is wonky as all heck. Um, but, yeah, okay. Eight and a quarter inches, D2. Oh. USA. Really? Well. I mean, I don't know. I don't know about this. I don't know about this. I'd like to know. I'd like to know exactly what they mean by that. But either way, 7196 for a dual action D2 um, OTF is not bad. It'd be shocking if it was, <laughs> if that, that bit down there was 100% true. But I don't know. So the Mini Eagle and the Falcon. So there's a little boy and there's a big boy for the same price. Um, a lot of people ask me why I never reviewed this. You want to know why? I'll tell you. Uh, as a portable storage media uh, USB sticks, as as a portable storage media, okay, USB sticks have become an integral part of our everyday life. Blah 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 blah. Are we not going to say who the collaboration was with? No, they're not. Well, if you'd like to look it up yourself and find out who they're who they collaborated with to make that, then you'll probably know why I didn't review it. Moving on here. Ah, this boy. <laughs> if you didn't know, um, DLT's exclusive run of the Demco AD 20.5 with the OD scales and the black blade is still available here. I think in um, both Shark's Foot and Clip Point configurations. Um, un memento, un memento. I believe we will come across the shark's foot version here soon. We'll move on here. Um, but yeah, these are, uh, these are awesome. They're still awesome. They're still OS 10A and most people are going to say it's overpriced, blah, blah, blah. Let, you've probably made up your mind, right? It's, it's one of those things. The people yelling have made up their minds and they're just like an opportunity to be mad. Blah. You know, well, okay. It is what it is. <laughs> Uh, so you can buy it or not buy it and then move on with your life because nothing should be that dramatic. Um, eh. Moving on. More. Oh, those are slim middies. Okay, so they have a few slim mini marauders left that are a little less expensive. So, oh, slim midi. This is the... That's right. This is the shorter and slimmer version of the knife. I think these are about 8 inches. Yeah, 7.9 blade thickness, if you can believe it. Uh, it is 125 thousandths on the spine for a Medford. Uh, that'll actually uh, that'll actually slice. I mean, it'll slice well. The other, the thicker ones will slice. It's just if you want the performance oriented versions, then there you go. Um, no, no, not interested. Oh, bird knives! Wow, <laughs> there it is. Yeah, still here. Slotted shark's foot. That's the version of this I would recommend if you are, if you're someone who's interested. If you're not interested and you just want to yell and complain, then just shut up. I don't care. I yeah, I've heard it. That's fine. I, I, I didn't make this knife. It's not my knife. It's just you get tired of seeing the same thing over and over and over. I know. I shouldn't even like all I'm doing is just inviting. <laughs> People are just gonna do it anyway, right? Um, if you are considering this, you can aggressively ignore everyone who's shouting in anger um, because they're not actually interested in it, right? Um, if you are considering this, the best version of it is um, the shark's foot blade, in my opinion. Uh, I love mine. I use it all the time. And honestly, the OS 10A is fine. I thought that originally that it would perform somewhere between VG10 and 154 in terms of edge retention. According to Demco, it's actually closer to 440C, but it's not the same composition. It, it has different attributes, right? Stainless, easier to sharpen, easy to sharpen, and edge retention somewhere in that vicinity. Mine's been fine and I've just been stropping it. I think I've stropped it twice and I use it quite a bit. It's one of my most carried knives ever. And what I actually, the only thing that I really don't like about it are the scales. 
I the blade steel I don't it's fine but the, it's the scales that's the part that I'm kind of like eh you know so yeah uh, if you're gonna pick one up pick that guy up what else do we have mm, don't care about the uh, there's some hinders here <laughs> wow look at that we found some secret hinders <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Look at that one there. What do we got for the blade steel? Oh, that's such a good. So I owned this. This is a really, really good fixed blade. Really good. 20 CV, black micarta. Uh, and then we have a black washed blade, the uh, Emmet. Oof, boy. Yeah. I, uh, and it's a, you know, for, for what this is, right? There are some, it's, it's not, people are like, you just came in down on cold steel for 300. If you're going to spend 300 bucks on a fixed blade, anybody who's handled cold steel stuff and hinder stuff, would you rather pay $375 for a Warcraft Tanto through cold steel or $315 for a hinder? I like cold steel, but the quality is not, the overall quality, it, it's incomparable. Rick Hinderer wins by a landslide in overall quality. I understand blade steel geometry size etc blah 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 goes into it right so spend your money how you will me mm, i'd rather have an emmet mm, in a heartbeat definitely oh some uh some hoback summits for 625 bucks huh hmm. i bet we see a recent change in the specs <laughs> um did that on purpose uh, <laughs> oh man <laughs> uh, yeah okay <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> it's, it's funny <laughs> i don't think dlt is trying to hide anything i think um you know there were a lot of retailers affected by that uh that drama and if you don't know um Jake Hoback was not being super clear originally about, uh, or he was not properly, he was not disclosing the country of origin information in a way that most people felt was transparent. And when I say most people, I mean both consumers and retailers alike. Um, and people got pretty upset because they're freaking expensive. And almost everybody assumed that everything he made was made in the United States, which would help explain this. But if that's not the case, then, you know, you guys can decide for yourselves. RGT Spyderco Para 3 scales. Um, I have a set of RGT scales on my Para 3 and they are wonderful. They are also, um, let's jump on this purple haze here, uh, made in the USA. Fat carbon, those look nice, I like those. Yeah, okay. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's get back. Ew, ew. What is this? Corkscrew open. Oh, oh my gosh. How pretend, how, how, how pretentious and curly mustache do you have to be to carry this around? Sorry. Maybe you like this. I'm, a, I'm, this whole thing has just been this one long, like horribly insulting. <laughs> I'm sorry. If you have this and you love it, I wouldn't actually judge you. It's just to me, there's a very specific type of gentleman that pops into my head. Yes, he has a long, an elongated top hat, and a, he has a monocle and a curly mustache. Yes, a curly mustache and wears suspenders, right? Even though it's 2022, this person walks around like this, right? It's very inconvenient choices all, all over his person, um, but it's presented in the manner of minimalism, yes, of course, minimalistic lifestyles. Oh, poo poo town. Oh God, there's so many. I don't like open L's. Tactical shovel. There we go. <laughs> Jeez, anything else? Cool. A special forces trench shovel. It's a shovel that's thirty inches long. So there you go. Um, let's. Ooh, some swords. Ooh. Oh, this is, um, this looks uh, nice. So I have a cold steel sword. Tell you something from cold steel I'd spend two to 300 bucks on is another sword. 
Um, I chopped an iPad in half with a sword that was very, very simple. Oh, man, I am actually in this moment tempted to buy this. I can't do it during the video because I don't want you to see all my information. 1055, probably spring steel. Hmm, hmm. 42 inches. Is it like a one-hander? Oh, that is so freaking cool. Oh, it's got the decorative. Why do I like swords? I'm such a child. Oh, God. Those are so good. That's the best. Everything that I've seen online, like back, back when I ferociously researched swords, Cold Steel makes the best quality to durability ratio, which they're already known for when it comes to, you know, folding knives and many fixed blades, right? They definitely have some expensive stuff. If you want to, uh, you know, carry the thing that um, Sephiroth carries around in Final Fantasy VII, um, then there you go. You can spend $700 on this massive, how big is this? 57, so maybe it's just like a, it looks like the one that he, it's like a three-handed, if you have three or four hands, this is perfect. This is a perfect katana for Goro from Mortal Kombat. Um, and then they have a, oh, an O katana, and an Emperor katana, and they have a dragonfly. Wakazahi, Wakazahi, i not trying to insult anybody. I just don't know how to pronounce it. This is gorgeous. And I believe that uh, it's probably made in a way that would, you know, make it expensive. I don't know if I'd pay that much for it. I, I, don't, I, like, uh, I like medieval, you know, like more of, uh, I'm, not, I'm not into katanas when it comes to swords. I'd rather have something that's got an edge on both sides and is more of a, you know, sort of medieval English like that area, like the, I don't like like the sabers or the, you know, freaking, what do you call the pirate sword? Like, I don't, I don't like any, any stuff like that. Um, I like stuff like this. This aesthetic is super cool to me. Something that you would carry around in Elden Ring. I think that looks awesome. This is a little bit too much. This is a little fancy, a little bit too fancy. This is just right. Um, anyways, getting stuck on swords here. I didn't know that these were, I'm really, I really want to buy that sword. <laughs> oh man. Here's their, here's their cost efficient stuff. Um, you want to pick up, you know, what's essentially an indestructible outdoor tool. Um, something like the ADPGTK, <laughs> ADPGTK, GI, uh, Tanto. Um, we have 1055 polypropylene handle, which I can tell you because the cold steel training equipment that I purchased for my kids to play with outside, because let's be honest, those are toys. Uh, oh, they're serious training equipment. I mean, okay, maybe they are. Maybe they are. My kids use them as toys. This, that's, this stuff is freaking indestructible. I hit it. I hit one of those swords with the lawnmower. <laughs> and it was fine. It just put a little mark in it, but geez, it was fine. Um, Scared the bejesus out of me, man. Hitting a giant polypropylene sword with the push mower. Oh, man. It was like, wham! And they uh, definitely dulled the, uh, one of the blades. Um, but, yeah, uh, there you go. Like, this is something that you, you know, full tang and 1055. Super durable. And what's the blade stock thickness? 160,000. So you're talking Hinder XM18 thickness and Tanto configuration. You're fine. This, neat, but like, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna like cut and punch cardboard boxes? Um, or, you know, like wood, cut and punch wood? One of my favorite um, folding knives from Cold Steel is the SR1. Um, the SR1 Lite is substantially less expensive. Uh, if you really want S35VN, then you can buy these for 170 to 175, they're there. Uh, I hate this. Uh, the leather neck. I think that's been around for a while. The drop forged hunter. That looks kind of nice right there. Uh, ultimate hunter. There's a tall war. If you want, you know, a big crazy, you know, if you're one of those people who carries five and a half inch blade around, then there you go. Some more stuff. 
And we're getting into O-lights, and I believe back into the area that we were last time. We'll go one more page. These are nice, the JE made stuff, real nice. Yeah, because there's the Axial uh, OTFs and they are gone. So, oh, we were gonna do um, restock. Let's go back to the main page. Smartest thing, DLT implemented. Um, all, all retailers need this is a restock page so that we know when popular things that have left the stock come back, like the mini Crooked River or the 940, or the Spyderco Amalgam. I didn't think I'd see that again. The Siren, LC200N, Manix 2 Lightweight. The 0470 Sinkovich Flipper. Didn't know those were coming back. I don't know who still wants a Mini Infidel for $396, but they're there. TRC Apocalypse, that's a nice looking fix, but I don't know anything about that. Delica 4 in uh, orange, yeah. The stainless steel Delica, the Dragonfly in pink, RGT 80 20.5 scales. There you go. You can uh, you can dress up your already slightly overpriced Demco 80 20.5, right? Uh, but at least you can make the scales better. At that point, I'd that'd be you know I'd I'd prefer to have some upgraded scale. I should ask them if they'd send me some uh, to demonstrate because I'd really like to see how easy the install is. Para 3 partially serrated, for those of you looking for that. I bet these are all S45VN now. Ooh, tactile turn, bolt action pen, uh, Damascus in titanium. That's the big fat boy. That's exactly what I've got. New port tuxedo handle. There's the mini turn bolt. There's the side click turn bolt mini. Whole bunch of uh, cool. I haven't looked at this page for a bit. That's cool. The Spyderco enough. <laughs> There's two pages. Cold Steel Recon Tanto. What's on the second page? Oh, the Resilience and S35VN for $117. Eee. Um, there's this freaking weird thing. The Spyderco Harpy. I didn't even... I don't think I've ever seen that. Uh, Autonomy 2. Full serrated in black. More turn bolts. Adamus, this is the newer Adamus in crew wear. Slim bolt action mini in titanium. Some other stuff, whole bunch of stuff here. It's always worth checking. Champion Hope Benchmade, what? The standout Crooked River now in a smaller everyday size featuring the same traditional boat. It's the same readout for the mini crew, what's? So it's just a champion hope version. I don't understand, um, but okay, it's there for it looks like the same price as the. That's um probably Benchmade's best knife is the Mini Crooked River, uh, probably. Well, guys, I think that's it. This was fun. Lots of cool stuff at DLT Trading. Like I said. I will post um, the new arrivals page right down in the description for your convenience. And when you click on it before you go to this page, it does. Uh, I do benefit from that, so I would appreciate it. Same thing with the uh, restock page we're looking at here. Um, thanks so much for watching today. I think that's going to be it. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. Uh, and if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.